The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink TV, its sponsors, or partners. This is the best time of the year. I mean, no thermal underwear, no cleaning off the car at minus 40, and I mean, getting more than four hours of daylight so you don't feel like a vampire. You get t-shirts, shorts, bikinis, socks, and sandals just not together, and I'm all in for this. But what I really love to do during this season is sample what Northern Ontario has to offer. I'm Chris Mask, and I love food. I mean, cooking's my passion, it's in my blood. And you might ask, what does Northern Ontario have to offer exactly? These transforming these little dirt nuggets into crispy golden works of art and it's my job to try them all. Okay, so living in Northern Ontario, one thing that a lot of people have to deal with are bear sightings, and as it happens here in Coniston, we have a bear sighting. Now, Mario, everybody calls you bear. Yes. You have a mobile fish and chip truck. Yes, I do. Never heard of that before. This is almost like a food truck. So what was the inspiration for that? Uh, well, we started doing this as a fundraiser to help out schools and fire departments, any local charity. And it just got bigger and bigger, and now we're we decided to open up a basically a mobile food service or mobile food trailer you might say uh, we go all over ontario and quebec uh, we do many festivals we do like powwows we do weddings um, special events um, backyard parties backyard barbecues uh, we run pretty much year round uh, mostly it's in the wind in the summertime from march till probably around november that's our summer, busy summer season. And then in the, what we call our winter season, starts at the end of November, we go through, then we have Christmas parties, uh, staff parties. Uh, people have, like they call them, skidoo parties at home. They hire us, we come in, we do all the cooking, we set up, um, they eat, and then we leave, we pack up and we leave. That way the host doesn't have to sit around and do the cooking, do the cleanup, serve anybody. We do everything. And with your certification, you're considered a mobile kitchen, so you can do everything right on site. Right on site. Everything, all the food is all prepped on site. Uh, the cooking is all done on site. Um, and like I said, we're a fully certified mobile kitchen. So this is really a one-stop shop, and this is great. I mean, you're here in Coniston today. You're going to be in the. Uh, you're going to be over at the Doki's Reserve, I believe, tomorrow. You yep. said uh, this weekend we're going to be at the Doki's Powwow. Uh, it's a yearly event, uh, and we go. That's one of the events that we do. And you were in Warren last weekend. Okay, well, why don't we get inside then and see what you got going for us? Sounds good. Awesome. Okay, so here we are in Bears with the three bears: Mama Bear, brother-in-law Bear, and of course the original Bear here. What are you making for us today? We're going to make some fresh Lake Erie pickerel and fries made from our homemade batter and uh, hope you guys like it. Can you give us a secret on your homemade batter? It's a secret. That's the secret I guess to everything, right? I mean a good batter is really what uh, what makes a really good fish. Definitely. It's obviously no fish because you go through a lot of it. A lot of it. And when you say a lot of it, you were saying 13,000 pounds of fish. Yep. A good weekend about seven, 800 pounds? Easily, yes we do. That's amazing. Do you get sick of fish after a while? No. No? I guess fish are a staple of uh, a bear's diet anyway. So. That's right. What has to be the most challenging thing for you than running this uh, mobile chip stand? <sighs> Going from place to place, making sure that the property, the space is proper, uh, the area is nice and level most of the time. Sometimes we have challenging events that trailers are not uneven, so we have to put them up to level before we, everything gets started in cooking. And I like the fact that with your band of fryers that you have here, your fish is separate from where separate. you're actually yes, fries are right. going so There's in. no cross-contamination with the fish or the fries. And uh, that way, if people have allergies, you can have the fries, you can have the chicken. We cook chicken separately in our different fryers, so the fish is always secluded only by itself. Same batter as the uh, fish? No. Nope. Nope. The, the chicken is already pre-battered. Uh, it's frozen chicken tenders that we buy. Um, that way, they're always perfect and 
Good. But we are dealing with absolutely fresh fish here. Definitely fresh, as you can see. I mean, it's it's fresh. It came in yesterday. If so. you had to give a piece of advice for somebody who was looking to start up a business like this, what would it be? Hmm. Patience, hard work, and time. And a good staff, right? Mama and bear. an excellent staff, right. yes. Yeah. you got to keep her happy. I That's right. Brother-in-law bear? Eh, not so nah, much. Not so, much. That's yeah. <laughs> so what do you have your fryer set at for your chips? Probably about 325, uh, 350? 350. Uh, everything's cooked at 350. And what kind of potatoes are you using? Uh, Poulet potatoes. They're Kennebec potatoes. Yeah, there we go. Don Poulet potato, good quality potato. That's are you right. blanchers or do you just put them right into the fryer? After we usually them put them right to the fryer because the demand is so high and fast that we have no time to blanch them. We just uh, chop them and cook them. That way they're always fresh and crispy, just like people like them. And I mean, that is the key to a good fry, is a good, crispy, crunchy fry, That's right? right. That's right. And if you're not using the right temperature, they will go soggy. They won't be nice color. And I mean, then your product's not proper, you know? And that's a man who knows his fries. So just having fish and chips and a bit of chicken on the menu here, do you find that uh, people ask you for some strange requests? Are you happy with this? Or are you looking to expand the menu? No. Nope. Uh, we wouldn't expand. We've tried different things in the past. Like I said, we've been in this business for almost 10 years. Um, there's no, no point in expanding. Like they say, if it's not broken, why fix it? Absolutely. And I mean, the fish is coming out of this. That's a, a gorgeous color on that. Can I take one guess in your batter? Sure. Cornmeal? Not even close. Really? Not even close. Ah. More fry top? Because that looks like the kind of batter you'd get on a catfish. That's yeah. uh, that's nope. lovely though. That's your fish. There. This is your chicken. And that's your fish. There's no cornmeal at all huh. in the chicken or in the fish. Wow, that would, that's really surprising to me. Yep. So no gravies, nothing. It's just bare bones fish and chips. Bare like bones fish says. and chips. Sometimes when we do yeah, special man. events, um, we'll do uh, no, puts ins like in areas where there isn't uh, any puts in served or we'll do onion rings also just as uh, some people don't like fries or they try to slim down watch their diet so we serve onion rings rather than potatoes oh i understand because you know the onion rings make you more svelte than the, the, right. the potatoes less, definitely. Carbs. less carbs less carbs yes yeah, right and empty calories because of the middle of the onion ring. well that's it yes <laughs> all right bear well i guess we'll get into the uh, the tasting of this and uh I'm excited for this. Uh, like I said, that looks like a beautifully cooked fish. Yep. Cooked to perfection all the time. And obviously the good staff too with brother-in-law Bear and yeah. Mama Bear here. It's all family in here. We all work together. We have fun too. That's right. A family that fries together stays together? That's right. That's right. There you go. That's a motto you put That's on your next motto. round of shirts. Right. So Bear, when it comes to your actual fish batter that you're keeping a complete secret, yeah. how long was that a process? Um, it took a while to make it. Uh, we started out, we uh, started making different fish fry parties at home. And we had a whole bunch of samples that I would give out. And my buddies, my friends and family would say, okay, well, this is good. That would change. That could be different. So we would change it up again and mix it up again. And we did that for, I'd say, about two months before we pretty much perfected it, the actual batter. And Eventually, it got tweaked out to what we're using now, and we've been using it for seven years now. This is the same batter. It's never changed. It's that's This is the batter. And again, this is a labor of love because some of these pictures show you cooking in minus 35 in a yeah. tent. Yes, in a tent. That's how so we started. Having this truck, this is, this this is, is, uh, this is a luxury. <laughs> it's a luxury, definitely, definitely. doesn't matter if it rains or not. Uh, that's how it was. So back here at Bears with Bear and your fish and chips. Now, just just so that people know, this isn't the actual size that you give. I just asked for a smaller portion no, of fries. No, that's uh, actually just like a kid's size. Because I'm trying to watch my svelte figure. Definitely. See, Definitely. You know, but it's all cholesterol-free. Cholesterol-free, good. Is it calorie-free too? Sure. So the one thing that uh, you mentioned is that the uh, cut of fry here is not like your traditional cut. No. It's a little on the smaller side. That's right. It's a uh, 5 sixteenths. And the reason we went with that is uh, it gives you a crispier fry. The fry doesn't get as mushy, and they cook a lot faster than your traditional 3-8 fry. So you can see that you've got a really nice color on this. Yes. And I've already been snacking away at this because it's a very fresh taste. 
you really get that potato taste. There's not an excess salt on this. I mean, this is perfect to, to me, honestly, a bit of malt vinegar on the side of this, and I'd be in, I'd be in heaven. I think Gordon Ramsay would probably be in heaven with this. <laughs> I'm, again, stunned that there is no cornmeal in this, because even just the color on this, you can see the speckling nope. of your spices, which will remain a mystery. Definitely. And you haven't given me any hints of anything that's in your batter. But this is fresh Lake Erie pickerel. You can see the, the moisture in that. This is perfectly cooked, so good job there, brother-in-law bear. Thank you very much. Mm. Yep, this is a beautifully cooked piece of pickerel. Good job, that is awesome. Thank you. Now, if I can just get your chicken as well, because... Yes. We talked about it. As I've got my mouth full. And even though this isn't, this isn't made from scratch on site, the one thing that I can say about your chicken is, again, gorgeous batter on this. You don't even have to say who your yes. supplier is. But again, the moisture inside one of these chicken fingers. This is not processed. This is full on chicken breast. Yes, it is. You guys have this down to an art form in here between you, Mama Bear, and Brother in Law Bear. And honestly, this was an awesome experience. Thank like, you. You guys really do a good job. Awesome, Bear. Thanks. Can I get a hug? Give me a hug. A bear hug. A bear hug. <laughs> I had to do that. Mama Bear, can we do this without getting into sister wives? Yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. How about brother-in-law bear? Oh, he's going to come in on this, too. It's a hug fest for yes. everyone. Thank you for coming up. Good job. You know what, guys? Thank you. This is, this is awesome. Bears, if you can get a bear sighting here in northern Ontario or beyond, I highly suggest you come and check this place out. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome job. So here in my hometown of Timmins, Ontario, at what has to be really one of those hidden gems, it's Radical Gardens. And joining me today is Zach. You're the lead farmhand here. I mean, this is so, this is such a unique location and such a unique concept for a city like Timmins. Where did the inspiration for this come from? Uh, it came a few years ago. Uh, the founder of the company, Brianna Humphrey, uh, started her own uh, process of healing through organic gardening and she wanted to bring that to Timmins. She started a small farm on her parents' property and did market for a few years. Uh, she had some really stellar vegetables and food, so she's brought that to uh, this store location we have now. Uh, currently, we are bringing to market food for a few farms in the area from as far south as Kinnebec, north of New Liskeard, uh, as far west almost to Hearst. Uh, we also do our own farm, and we are a farm-to-table restaurant offering uh, food with uh, local and uh, organic as possible, meats, fruits, and vegetables uh, every day for people. We also do caterings and an online market for uh, people working shift work here in Timmins to try to get vegetables out to the community. And uh, we do projects like that. You're really giving to the community with this. And one of the neat concepts too, which is you know something you'd see in like a, a bigger like foodie market like down south or something like that, is the fact you've got your own garden boxes even outside. Yeah, absolutely. We figured that it would be something to beautify the community as well as give people access to fresh fruits and vegetables, which many people don't have. So we've done the uh, farm outside there for this summer. Uh, we've got a bit of cabbage in there, broccoli, uh, some Swiss chard, and uh, we're doing a bit of tomatoes. And we're just doing that for anybody to pick on. If anyone comes down, they can take a snack out of it. We have some edible flowers in there, the nasturtiums, and we have uh, chives that are growing quite well. That's incredible that you would actually go that far to help out. And the best part is, is this all stays local. And you've been awarded several times and recognized by the community for this. What has to be one of the challenges, though, of bringing something like this to Timmins? Uh, it would definitely probably be that it's uh, quite different from the status quo here in town. Uh, people are looking for a set menu that is the same every day, a wide variety of things that they can rely on. Uh, we try to actually change it up. We go with what we know that we can do very well, but we don't have a set menu every day. We'll have a weekly burger and a weekly special. Besides that, we're looking at um, three different specials a day, usually something gluten-free as well as a vegan option. And uh, we're just changing it up, going with different tastes and flavors. And uh, that's something that we have yet to sell everyone in Timmins on. People who have tried it have quite enjoyed it. And uh, there's a lot of people, it's just, uh, they're, they're looking for a routine, something set, which we're not really doing. 
And you know what? That's spectacular. Let's get into the kitchen and see what you have for us today. Okay, that's it. Excellent. Okay, so we're with Keith behind the scenes here at Radical Gardens in the kitchen. Uh, you lost your hat for this, which is a shame because I think that was a real fashion statement there. However, it is about the food, not about the fashion. What do you got going for us back uh, here today? Today we're going to be offering our wonderful pork carnitas, and they are made with uh, locally in our own garden sourced uh, tomatillo pico de gallo, locally sourced pork from our butcher in New Lifted, as well as uh, served on a uh, fresh corn tortilla. Uh, with a bit of lettuce, sour cream, and some cojita cheese to top it off. And uh, after that, you, know, you guys get to try it and hopefully enjoy everything today. Now, you get your chanterelles from, uh, from local sources as well, so I mean, you're really moving out there. And when you say local, this is as local as it gets in yeah. Tennessee. I'll also be looking to uh, provide you guys with the taste of our uh, chanterelle pizza we're offering today. And we have a local couple who go out and they get uh, chanterelle mushrooms uh, once seasonally, and we try to bring them into the restaurant. Uh, we try to do uh, as many in season specials as possible. You name it, be it a fruit, a berry, a uh, mushroom growing in the woods, or whatever is ready for harvest time of the season, we're doing that in season and trying to keep it uh, you know, as uh, green as possible, essentially, for what's coming into our kitchen. With such a big revolving menu, what has to be your favorite thing that you've had? Uh, it would definitely be uh, probably running our shawarma days. We do a shawarma day about once a month and we uh, really do a good job on it. We use our own pickled turnips that we uh, have from our farm that we pickle and we run those all year long and they're quite amazing. And again, revolving menu, sometimes I can come back and kind of bite you in the keister, so to speak. Has there been something that you tried which you figured would go over like gangbusters and just ended up not being as successful as you had hoped? Um, yeah, that happens uh, quite frequently. Depending on the weather, you never know what will happen. Um, some days we have some of our most famous uh, meals go out and you don't actually end up selling too many of them. I do recall a few donor days where we had everything left at the end. And uh, you can't really control the ebb and flow in people though and you just got to keep doing it every day and putting out consistent product which you want to, uh, you, you yourself would want to eat every day for lunch, you know? So creativity is really not the issue with things, but what has to be one of the challenges of running an outfit like this? Um, well, definitely uh, when people are owning their own small business, they're dealing with everything from bookkeeper to advertiser to uh, front desk proprietor to being the dishwasher in the back. And uh, the owners here put in a lot of hours every day uh, doing everything behind the scenes and in front of the scenes for all of the clientele. and. Uh, it's just probably the uh, sheer amount of time that one has to put into running a small establishment with a uh, small crew. It may be a small group, but you've got an eclectic offering. Not only do you have the food, but you also have the dessert counter. We absolutely do. Uh, we have our in-house pastry chef. Uh, her name's Jen Pai, and she's been with us for about two years now, and she offers a full complement of both glutinous and gluten-free desserts for the people here in town. You even have the Rice Krispie Squares there, which are gluten-free, correct? Yeah, because they're not Rice Krispie Squares, they're actually Ruffles Chip Squares. They give you a bit of that salty taste. They're quite tasty. See, that's thinking outside of the box, and that's what I think would make something like this so successful. And it, it truly also goes into the labor of love. And you get to see it on all sides, because not only do you work back here, you are the lead farmhand. So you're in the trenches, getting your hands dirty with the produce and everything as well, Absolutely. Correct? I am every day. I uh, come into work sometimes, run the cash, help on the restaurant, help do a bit of cooking, and then I'll uh, scrub out. Before I was here today, actually, I was out picking a whole whack of pin cherries in the bush, and we're looking to do some choke cherry jelly with them, so it keeps you busy. Well, I can imagine it keeps you busy, and again, thinking of those new recipes and being able to present it and whatnot, and again, your work, it speaks for itself. You win awards. You're getting recognized, you're getting noticed, and this is something which is truly unique, not only just the Timmins, but honestly, it, it's unique in Northern Ontario because it's very rare that I've come across any establishment like this. And for the record, with Off the Chip Wagon, you were the first business to offer tacos. Well, I hope they do them justice today, sir. Well, I imagine it's better than the, uh, the store-bought or the, uh, shall we say, the cranked out variety of fast food taco. Because I can tell you, if we had smell-o-vision, people would be going nuts. I was drooling just coming in here from the smell of the, the carnitas going on over there. Thank you. And then here you are. These are our local beef carnitas. Oh, fantastic. I mean, look at that. Do you do your own tortilla shells? Uh, no, we don't. We got, those, uh, we got those ordered in, but we are working on getting our own recipe down for uh, doing our tortilla press, uh, which we have. 
we've just been uh, playing around with it and also looking to uh, source a uh, good supply of locally sourced corn would be the next step. Excellent. I can't wait to dig into this and try this. I Absolutely. mean, this, this smells Everything else fantastic. You're looking, at, you're looking at your tomatoes, your lettuce, your pico de gallo, your tomatillos, your green onions today, and your pork is all local. So we're looking at this being 98% yeah. Local product? Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't get any better than that because this is what food should be. This is what really you should strive for in a restaurant, particularly in, in any town, not just Timmins. Yep. This is fantastic and I can't wait to try this. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Keith, we've got the tacos. I mean, it smells fantastic. We got the hat back, because I mean, that's, that's classic. Is that your signature style? Oh, yes, sir. Because I would really like to get a hat like that of my you own. You certainly can, actually. Uh, it's a little bit Western here in town. A little Western, really? Yes, sir. I might have to check that out before, yeah. I, before I head home. It's a great hat, oiled canvas, takes area and all the weather. Now, how many of these do you figure you can smash in one outing? If I was to eat all of those tacos? Yeah. I could easily go through about 18 of them. 18? Absolutely not, without question. You're like half my size, and I, I, I don't think I could do 18. I'm bottomless pit. I do appreciate the fact you've even given me a napkin for this, because oh, this looks like it's going to be messy. Yeah, they're And quite when you're messy. eating tacos, this is how it should messy be. Messy is good, right? Absolutely. So I'm going to mess your clean counter. I'm going <laughs> to tell you now. I'll clean it up. Mmm. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm even talking with my mouth full for this. Oh, it's totally worth it. Pork is one of those meats that can easily dry out. Yeah. I mean, the way you've done it with the carnita style, it's great. Uh, the freshness of the veggies just pops with that. This is, this is awesome. Our tomatoes and our uh, tomatillos were picked yesterday. They're just ripening up. They're one of the few things that could save from the uh, nasty frost we've been having recently. And you can see, these are not dry tacos no, in the least. I've made a mess all over your counter. I'm surprised I didn't put it all over myself too. I also picked the uh, cilantro fresh from herb garden that went into the pico today. Really? Yeah. Again, probably 98% local on this plate. Yep. And not a lot of places can say that. This is fantastic. Radical Gardens, Timmins, Ontario. If you haven't found this, discover it because this is going to be a regular haunt with my taco -y hands. Thank you, sir. I'd give you a hug, but we've got too much counter space between us. It's been a pleasure, Chris. you got to check this out. Fantastic. High five on that. Wow. Hope you got your fill from this episode, but don't worry, we'll be back on the wagon and hitting the dusty trails soon enough. Until next time, I'm Chris Mask. Thanks for watching. Where's this been all my life?